Now we're going to use some stamps. Again, I've used uh, background stamps. I'm just going for patterns. Um, rubber stamps are great, and I have picked ones that are unmounted. You can use variants of stamps, um, and of course, you have got the wonderful texture treads that have been brought out as well by Melt Pot. Now, what I'm going to do first of all is just use my Versamark. Your Versamark is um, a lovely pad because it's just a sticky pad. So that means it's not going to actually ink, but it allows the 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 actual UT to lift off it. You can use ink with this. So if you want to use Brilliant, something like that, put it on the stamps and you'll get a beautiful colour. Now, our first one, we're just going to pour. So with this, we're going to pour directly onto the stamp. So we're bringing our melt pot in. And what we're going to do again, give it a bit of a swidge. Got all stuffed up to it. Give it a bit of a swidge in my melt pot. As such, so give it a nice stir. And then what we're going to do with your stamp, if you want to create, you don't want it too thick, what I do is just put a little of my UT on the stamp and then using my tool, using my spatula, just start to drag the UT down the stamp. Now, this will give you, it'll still give you uh, dimension, it'll still give you that fantastic pattern, but what you're not doing is using loads of uter. So you've not got a big clump of uter. So for someone who's a little bit tight, like myself, when it comes to my crafting, um, this is just perfect. Now you do need to let it cool down. Because it's thin, because it's a fine layer of uter, it cools down nice and quick. And then start to peel your stamp back. And this is the beauty of using an unmounted stamp. Can you see how easily that's just peeling away and look at that now we have got incredible texture and um, when it's cooled down you could emphasize that texture even more with your gleams but that just looks brilliant especially for backgrounds i love this as well i like all these um these edges that aren't perfect you know like these i think for a background that is cool now that's our first way of using stamps next we're going to take the stamp and actually, with this one, for a change, what we're going to do is put the UT directly on the craft mat. So what you do is pour onto the craft mat, take your stamp and actually lay your stamp into your UT. Now this is good if you've got a wood mounted stamp for instance, um, this is brilliant because obviously you don't need to pour your, your UT directly onto it, you can use it to, to put into the UT. What I do like though, because mine's not mounted I can feel the heat of the UT so I know when it's cooling down. So when you're happy with that, when you think it's cooled, do obviously use a heat resistant craft mat. That is vital. Look at that. Look at all the patterns in there. Now lift this off. And again, we've got the wonderful, um, the wonderful pattern coming through. Now we could do that again this time. Obviously we've got that, that wonderful stamp. But what we're going to do is just take our mica powder and we're just going to give the stamp a layer of mica powder. Now it's already got, um, I can still feel it sticky, so it's already got enough Versamark still on it. We're not going to do too much, not too much mica, but I just wanted you to see how lovely this looks. So all these blobs that's on my craft mat will go back in your pot, but we're just going to, and I'm not going to do too much because I want to show you the next technique. So just layering that on. I know where my mica is on my stamp, so I can position it quite specifically and then allow that to sit into my melt pot as such. Sorry, to sit into my uter. And again, I can feel when it's cooling down, so I can start to lift this off as such. Now, can you see the difference? If I just peel this off my, my mat, can you see there? That one's got all the mica and that one hasn't. So you can see that beautiful shine of mica. Because it is hot and um, sticky, you would be able to put the mica on it now. Obviously let it cool down and you will be able to use it with your, uh, your actual gilding waxes. Now bring the pot in again. This time all these bits we want to melt these in, like such. If you want to put more powder in, of course you can add it at any time. We've got enough powder for the next um, the next demonstration but I am going to make sure that it's nice and molten and we're ready to pour because this time what we're going to do we've got our stamp and again I've gone for a really nice texture stamp but this time we're using cut cutty cookers 
I always have trouble saying that. Co cookie cutters, that's the one. Um, so, again, could be any. I'm not using ones that I've obviously used for baking. Um, these are just what I use for you to. So what we're going to do, now there's a few ways of using these. What we're going to do is pour it directly on the stamp. So this time, rather than going for a thin layer of uter, we want a good chunky size of uter. So we want a good layer. And you need to make sure you're pouring enough to actually fit that cookie cutter in. So then we push down now. This isn't sharp enough to actually damage my stamp and I'm not pushing down enough to damage my stamp. All you're really doing is making sure you've got the outline of that image so when you, it's cool enough to peel back off we can actually cut this out now again you need to test when it's cool again just use your see that it definitely isn't cool if I had dipped my fingers in there we'd have had to have bleepers on this because that is absolutely molten and it is hot I mean if you are working with your youth if you are working with milk pots um, possibly don't use it with the kids or use it with supervision make sure that um, that it's nice and safe now again just testing and again, it isn't quite um, it isn't quite cool enough yet. It cools down because you've actually melted it. It's not a drying process, it's a cooling process. So you do need to make sure it's nice and cool before we go on to our next stage. And I'm just carrying on dipping. See, every time, just twist it round and look, now it's going. Now it's starting to cool down. Still a bit sticky. I, I'm very impatient, so it means that I tend to lift this off too early but I think that's fine so now what we're going to do while this is still warm you do need it to be warm for this otherwise you're not going to get the actual um, image that you're cutting out now I'm this is quite lucky I'm able to actually push it through but if I take my mold off can you see now because it is still warm some of this will literally just snap away from the edges of my mold if it won't snap just use your scissors and cut it away and look at that we have got a beautiful heart shape um, a heart shape but with all that texture from that stamp how cool is that if there's any bits that you need to alter pop them again pop them on the side of your, your melt pot and you'll be able to melt those down if you want to add different colors use your gilding wax and you'll add extra texture but I think using your stamps um, with your, your cutters looks absolutely incredible.